Uh, let me see, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm married. Uh, I have to say that getting married was the best decision I ever made. I'll never forget putting on that wedding ring for the very first time and thinking, I am someone else's problem now. <laughs> I got married old school to a woman. And, uh, wow. Oh, settle down. The audience is actually heckling each other. That's not like My wife and I have three kids, one of each. One of each. Of course, I'm old enough to remember when you had to wait until your kids were born to learn if it was a boy or a girl, you know. Nowadays, of course, you have to wait until they're 18. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on a cruise ship. Your boss isn't watching. <laughs> Actually, we have two daughters and a son. <coughs> Little baby Lucy. This kid has not slept once in her entire life. Isn't it amazing how you can love a kid before it's even born, but not afterwards? <laughs> now, the oldest is a teenager, and that's a cute age, teenage years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. I sometimes wonder if all teenagers rebel, regardless of the culture they grow up in. For example, I always imagine some 13-year-old kid from, I don't know, let's say, the deep, dark jungles of Brazil saying, one day he comes home and decides he's no longer going to wear that bone in his nose anymore. <laughs> his parents give him the speech, as long as you're living with us, you're going to wear a bone in your nose. Now, take off that ridiculous suit and tie and strap a leaf between your legs. <laughs> now, uh, then there's Lucas in the middle, our son. What can I tell you about Luke? Uh, very smart kid, very bright. For example, a couple weeks ago, uh, he was helping me with his homework. Yeah. <laughs> now, Lucas is born during the Super Bowl, so I missed it. Uh, fortunately, I checked on he and his mom during halftime, and they were fine. <laughs> now, my wife is from Germany. Now, we were told that if my wife just speaks uh, German to the kids, and I speak to them only in English, the kids will eventually learn both languages fluently which is the way it's worked for our daughters, but our son, Lucas, is now 13 and speaks only Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Dutch is a strange language. It's like German after nine too many Heineken's or something. <laughs> Actually, you know, having bilingual children really makes you appreciate what an exasperating language English must be to learn. For example, every day, I have the same exact conversation with my son. He'll say, Dad, Look what I did do. And I have to explain to him. Now, Luke, remember, in English, you never say, look what I did do. It's just, look what I did. Then he dutifully replies, look what I did. And I say, very good. Now, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, this isn't TV. I can see you not laughing. <laughs> Oh, needless to say, as a comedian married to a German, I sometimes have to go outside the marriage for laughs. <laughs> Let's face it, there are two things Germans never joke about. Hitler and everything else. <laughs> I do like to run new material past my wife from time to time, though, and uh, if she doesn't laugh, I put it in the show. <laughs> Compliments do not come easy to a lot of Germans. For example, after even my best shows, my wife very seldom has anything, you know, to say to me in terms of positive reinforcement. Um, I used to take it personally, but I've subsequently learned that for Germans, the absence of criticism is the highest form of praise. <laughs> criticism, on the other hand, is their specialty. For example, I overslept last week, and I'm shuffling into the kitchen, I'm wiping sleep from my eye, and my wife starts giving me this nasty look because I start making myself coffee, even though the kids are still waiting for me to make them breakfast. And I explain to her that just like on the airplane, you first affix your own oxygen mask. <laughs> uh. 
So there's some cultural uh, you know, tension between us that arises from time to time, but uh, we also have run-of-the-mill arguments, like about money, you know, which is pretty common, I think. For example, she thinks we can afford a pool boy, but I'm worried if I cave on that, we're going to end up having to get a pool as well. <laughs> <laughs> Jersey, if you guys were here, I'd be completely screwed. <laughs> Very rarely do our arguments descend into name calling, fortunately. Uh, one time I remember she called me immature and I said, I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> so uh, we have been dividing our time between Germany and the US. Now our long-term plan <clears throat> is to reside, you know, permanently in the U.S., although I haven't told her that yet. And, uh, actually, we both very much want to live in the U.S. We have different reasons. As for her, she just loves the climate. And as for me, I just want her to have the right to remain silent. <laughs> Roll with it. Go on, join these people. <laughs> So now Germany is amazing because it's like an entire country full of Germans. <laughs> <laughs> now Europe is incredible. I brought my wife on a few cruises and it's so great because every city in Europe is so unique. For example, Am uh, Venice, mm. beautiful city, very romantic, but in truth, I don't enjoy it as much without my wife. Uh, Amsterdam, on the other hand, is even more enjoyable without her. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> not a wife bashing show. <laughs> oh, so uh, she does speak great English. She makes small mistakes. Like somebody uh, made a pun recently. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Thank you. Oh, you're going back. <laughs> somebody made a pun recently and then said, no pun intended. And my wife said, none taken. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> But uh, sometimes she'll see me looking at other women and accuse me of comparing her to them, which is ridiculous, because when I look at other women, my wife is the last thing on my mind. 